Welcome listeners to an listening video. It's me Social Clown. In today's video, I will be giving my honest first impressions of Ed Sheeran's latest album, Subtract. In the end of this video, I will rank each song in a tier list, so stay tuned for that. But before we start, I would like to make a disclaimer that I'm just an average person who likes to listen to music. I have no background in this field, and that's totally fine because 99% of people listening to music aren't experts in it. Ed Sheeran just happens to be my most streamed artist, and his latest album just happens to have the best color in the world. So before I review each individual song and rank them in a tier list, I would like to talk about my general impressions of the whole album. So I'm somebody who likes to dance to music, and if I won't dance, then I would like to at least be able to sing them. Ed Sheeran has many songs that fit in this category of music, like Shape of You and Bad Habits. You know, the pop songs that become radio hits. Subtract, on the other hand, doesn't have radio as its main target audience. Subtract is an emotional album which represents Ed Sheeran's feelings in the past year or so. He lost two friends of his, Jamal Edwards and Shane Warne. He also went to court for copyright issues regarding two of his songs, Thinking Out Loud and Shape of You. His wife Cherry Seaborn also got cancer in this tough time while she was pregnant with the couple's second child. So lots of negativity in a very short period of time. Subtract represents all those feelings Ed had during this intense period in his life. In conclusion, Subtract doesn't necessarily include those pop songs that Ed Sheeran has found much success with in radio. But just because something isn't the best, it doesn't mean that it's bad. The first time I listened to each song in this album, I was unsatisfied. They all felt kind of mediocre and had the same acoustic tone which made all songs sound very alike. The reason why I had this first impression was mostly because I was unaware of the album's purpose and background and instead I came in with expectation of the next equals, which as mentioned, Subtract isn't trying to live up to. By now I've listened to each song at least 10 times. That's over 10 hours worth of music. After knowing more regarding the album and listening to it so many times, I've gotten a greater appreciation of this work and for what it is and not what I want it to be. With all this said, let's hop into each individual song and review and rank them all one by one. Subtract has 18 songs, including 4 bonus tracks. The first song of the album is Boat. It was released a couple weeks ago as a single, so I've listened to it like 30 times or so, I'm not sure. This is according to me the saddest song in the album, and the song that makes me cry the most. At first I didn't like how the line and the waves won't break my boat was being used. Don't get me wrong, the poetry in this single line is very strong, but it didn't fit with the chorus. I especially didn't like that the whole song ended with this line. To my ears, it sounded better if it ended with, but maybe I won't, which is the second last line. I still believe that the song could have ended better, but after listening to it over 30 times, I'm definitely used to it. Solid 8 here. Second up, Saltwater. This song was released with the album and has a very similar tone to Boat. It's a sad song about how one's last moments before death would be. The biggest difference between Saltwater and Boat is that Saltwater has a stronger chorus. I'll give it a name. Now we've got Eyes Closed, which was released over a month ago. And this song, well, immediate test here. Now I've got some explaining to do, and this might be controversial. The lyrics of a song means nothing to me. As long as I can sing the words, I'm happy. What matters more is the melody, beat, and how it sounds. The best example I can give is that I danced to the song Sunday Bloody Sunday by U2. It's about an event where many innocent people were killed, but the beat to the song is just so strong that I can't help myself to stand up and dance around while I shake my head. It's the same with Eyes Closed. The song is about when Ed Sheeran lost his friend Jamal, and that's clearly written in the lyrics. Do I know that? Yes. Does it matter? No. The song makes me want to literally dance with my eyes closed. I hope you guys understand what I'm going with. It's a true S tier. Life Goes On is similar to Eyes Closed, but acoustic instead of poppy. There's a sad message and a theme, but the emotions it gives me as a listener is all positive. It reminds me of thinking out loud, and when listening to Life Goes On, I want to dance with somebody. Too bad I'm single and ugly, so dancing with a partner is just a dream of for the future. A tier. The fifth song in the album is Dusty, which is about how Ed and his daughter would have fun together in the mornings while listening to a song called Dusty. This is the only intentionally positive song in Subtract. It has an interesting sound, which I would describe as fun and lighthearted. But there's one thing with the song that I really dislike, which is the bridge. In previous songs, the bridge would have the same instruments and feeling as the rest of the song. The bridge of Dusty stands very much out from the rest of the song. Although this vlogs this, I'll give the B because of how positive it is. Now here is my favorite song, End of Youth. It resonated with me as soon as this chorus was played. Every other song, even Eyes Closed, had to be listened to multiple times for me to love them. End of Youth? Nah. The chorus is so strong that I want to scream it out loud. It's a mix of anger and sadness and that's the perfect recipe for a strong emotional outburst or whatever you might call it. True S tier. Colorblind is an interesting song to me. You might want to sit down for this one. It reminds me of a Christmas song. Yeah, I know. It sounds stupid that this song reminds me of Christmas, but it does. 
It's slow, mentions colors and rainbows, and I just think of dark snowy nights as I have a smile on my face. I honestly don't know what the song actually means, and I don't want to know because it will ruin the Christmas feeling. I'll give it a C because of how it reminds me of Christmas when it shouldn't. Eighth song, we're almost halfway there. <laughs> Curtains took me by surprise. I didn't expect the rock song to be in this album. It's a loud song, and to my basic dumb monkey brain, loud equals good. From what I understand from the lyrics, it's about being a child playing hide and seek. And what is the most common place to hide? Behind the curtains. And Ed has been hiding for too long, even after the game has ended. And now he wants to come out from his hiding place and see the sunshine. What I don't understand though is that curtains are in front of windows. And you can see the sun from behind a window, where Ed is hiding, I guess. Perhaps I got wrong? Me here because of the interesting rock sound and happy lyrics. I said that Boat is the saddest song in the album, right? That's still true, but the next song, Borderline, is the best sad song in the album. Boat is the go-to if you want to cry. Borderline is the go-to if you want to feel sad. The piano is the perfect, most classic instrument for sad songs, and it delivers perfectly in this song. Beater. Although the piano is very good, it doesn't stand out from other sad songs. Similar to Life Goes On, Spark has a sad theme, but it sounds too positive to not dance. I just want to dance slowly while I sing it out loud with a smile on my face. I don't like the bridge, but the rest of the song is so good that it stays good. I'll give it an A. Song number 11 is called Vega, and I didn't search what that meant. Apparently it's the bright star in the constellation Lyra. I don't see anything real special with this song, other than it being enjoyable. It's a C for me, I don't have much to say about this one. Sycamore is another word that I don't know. It seems to be a tree. Cool, I guess. This is also the shortest song in the album, being 2 minutes and 50 seconds. I've seen many people loving this song and this message, but to me, this song doesn't stand out to me. I'm sorry, but it's a C for me. No Strings is another sad song, like the majority of the songs in this album. But there's nothing that stands out. I like it, but there's nothing more I can say than just ass. I'll give it a B because I still really like the chorus and I don't want to be mean. The last song in this album, excluding the bonus tracks, is Fields of Aberfeldy. Aberfeldy seems to be a place in Scotland. There aren't that many instruments in this song and the ones that are played are very quiet. The vocals are in focus and as I've said, I value melody more than vocals. Not that many instruments. I have to give it my first D. Sorry. Now we go to the bonus tracks and here is where I need your help. Please comment down below the purpose of bonus tracks. Why can't they be normal songs? I gave it a Google search but couldn't find any, any good answer. Anyway, Wildflowers is the first bonus track. It's another sad song. I don't see any meat on this bone. Wildflowers is unfortunately pretty dull. Perhaps I have to listen to it more times but for now it's a D. You might think that bonus tracks are bad songs because Wildflowers is a D tier. Well, the 16th song in this album, Stoned, which is also a bonus track, sits at B tier. It's a sad one, but I really like it. It's better than some of the normal tracks, which is interesting to me. I don't know what makes this a B tier, but it just is. We've got to the second last song of the album. I'm actually very surprised that this song is a bonus track because it has very good instrumentals and strong beats, as well as a very interesting story. Yes, this is one of very few songs where I can understand the lyrics. It was through this song that I learned that Ed's wife had cancer. The only reason why I would think that this became a bonus track is because it was way too personal to Ed and people who don't know his story wouldn't understand it. Anyway, beat here. We have reached the last song! This song is called Moving and again, it's better than some of the official songs in this album. I like what the song is trying to be, but it doesn't quite reach what it wants to be. It sounds like a low budget song. Neither the guitar nor Ed's voice sounds that good, but I assume it's a part of a new or different style of music. I'll give it a C and <laughs> my my, that's a very beautiful tier list. Just look at it. It's like a bell curve. How interesting. It was not done on purpose, I promise. So yeah, if you disagree with any of my choices, please write it down in the comments and please share your theories on why the last four songs are bonus tracks. Also, there's a Disney Plus show called Ed Sheeran, The Sum of It All, which I assume is about the process of writing his albums to track. Like this video if you want me to watch it and perhaps I will make a review of the show. Perhaps I will even change the tier list after getting a better understanding of the album's background. Speaking of tier list, I've linked this tier list down in the description so you can rank these songs according to your liking. Thanks for listening and I hope you will listen to me another time. Goodbye!